Hello and welcome back to the alphabet of astronomy. Today it's brought to you by the letter U and U is for UBV system. Okay, <laughs> so what is the UBV system? Well, the UBV system is actually the first standardized photometric system and is probably the most widely used photometric system. Okay, so what's a photometric system? So photometry is just measuring the intensity of light. Now astronomers like to use a kind of weird unit called magnitude to do this. Now this is a little bit strange because it dates back to at least the second century BCE. Basically magnitude is unitless and logarithmic. So a change of one in magnitude equals a change of 100 to the one fifth power or about 2.5. Magnitude is also brighter when it's lower. So that means a star with a magnitude of one is a hundred times brighter than a star with magnitude six, but a star with magnitude one is a hundred times less bright than a star with magnitude negative four. Although fun fact, no star is visible from Earth except the sun I have a magnitude as high or as bright as negative four, although Venus does have a magnitude of about that in the sky. Now we know that the intensity of light varies a lot with wavelength. So we could measure this in a very detailed way by taking a spectrum of a star, but that requires special instruments and it takes a lot of time. And so it's a little bit easier to do just photometric observing. So a photometric system then is a set of wavelength bands that have a known sensitivity to incoming light. And we can use these to characterize the brightness of light at different wavelengths. Now for the UBV system, those bands are called, as you might guess, U for ultraviolet, B for blue, and V for visible. The U band is centered on a wavelength of 364 nanometers, while B is centered at 440 nanometers, and V is centered at 550 nanometers. And all of these bands have a width that's about 100 nanometers or a little bit less. Now the system is calibrated such that an A0 spectral type star has the same magnitude in U, B, and V. And usually the measured brightness in each band is just given as a subscript. So M sub V would be the magnitude in the V band. So the UBV system is also called the Johnson Morgan system, and it was first developed back in the 1950s. It was later expanded with the addition of R for red and I for infrared at longer wavelengths centered around 700 and 900 nanometers. Now, because the UBV system was developed back in the 50s, part of the uh, choice of these bands was based on the sensitivity of photographic film, which was what was used to capture the um, incoming photons with, along with photomultiplier tubes. Nowadays, we mostly use something called CCDs to do this, but we still use the UBV system a lot of the time. Also, the shortest cutoff wavelength in the UBV system, the U band is a little bit narrower than the other ones, and that's because the shortest wavelength is set primarily by the absorption of light in the atmosphere, which means it can vary by time, geographic location, weather, atmospheric conditions, etc. But regardless, the UBV system is very widely used. So how does a photometric system work? Well, each of these bands is associated with a filter that lets through wavelength in that band. So these are physical filters that can be used to filter the incoming light. When observing, you also have to calibrate these bands somehow, usually by observing a star with a known magnitude in each of the bands so that you can compare it to the target you want to observe. Then you can observe your object of interest in each band and measure a apparent magnitude in each band. Now the usual way that this photometric system is used is by comparing the apparent magnitudes between bands. This is something called a color index. So for example, the B minus V would be the magnitude in the B band minus the magnitude in the V band. And the reason that such a comparison is more useful is because apparent magnitude depends very strongly on the distance the star is from us, among other things. And so the relative apparent magnitude between objects isn't really very comparable. However, the comparison between the bands isn't dependent on the distance, and so it's a very useful measurement for astronomical objects. So I mentioned the B minus V color index. So this one is very commonly used for stars, and it gives you the color of the star, and the color of the star is associated with the surface temperature of the star. So for example, our sun has a B minus V color index of about 0.656, which makes it a rather yellowish star. And using a formula that um, translates between B minus V and surface temperature, called Belesteros's formula. This actually gives a surface temperature of the sun of about 5,757 Kelvin, which is actually really close to the actual surface temperature, which we know to be 5,778 Kelvin. 
In contrast, you have a star like Mu Columbae, which is an O-type star that has a B minus B color index of negative 0.28 and a surface temperature of almost 33,000 Kelvin. Well, way on the other side, you have our nearest neighbor, Proxima Centauri, which is an M-type star, which has a B minus B color index of 1.82 and a surface temperature of only 3000 Kelvin. This B minus B color of a star is generally what's taken to be the X axis of a color magnitude diagram, which is kind of the observational version of a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Theorists tend to use temperature instead. There are other things that you can do with these photometric measurements. Uh, for example, we can use color indices to characterize small bodies in the solar system. So this is an example of something that's actually called a color-color diagram. So you can see that there's one color index on the y-axis and a different color index on the x-axis. And you can see that different asteroids and different small bodies fall in different areas on this. And that has to do mostly with their composition. Color-color diagrams might also be used for a stellar population to help identify outliers. Um, and color-color diagrams have been proposed as a way to characterize the surface of exoplanets, although we don't really have quite enough detailed observations to do this quite yet. The color index of a galaxy can be used to estimate its component stellar populations and how they each contribute to the overall color index because we know, you know, bigger, brighter, hotter stars have more blue color indices, whereas these little M dwarf stars have more red. And so depending on how much each contributes to the overall stellar population, you get a different color index for the galaxy. And you can even use these photometric comparisons to do something called photometric redshift, which measures the redshift to distant galaxies. Now this is much less accurate than a spectroscopic redshift, but it can be done more widely and more easily for a huge number of galaxies. Now, most photo Z measurements aren't done in the UBB system. For example, the SSDS uses its own system of UGRIZ, but the concept is the same. So I hope you know a little bit more now about the UBB system, which is the most widely used photometric system that astronomers use to quantify the different intensities of light at various wavelength bands. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you will join us again next time for the letter V. Have a good one. Bye.